Hello, everybody, and welcome to Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Let's do Spider Man, written by J.J. Abrams, his son Henry. <laughs> what? So, there's a lot to unpack about Spider Man Bloodline. This only came out a couple of years ago. Oh. And it was all thanks to editor Nick Lowe, who was the Spider Man editor at the time, who had been courting J.J. Abrams for years to get him to write maybe a Spider-Man comic or just write for Marvel. I'm sure that he had some intermediary that was yeah. legitimate. It wasn't just, just kept bringing it hey, up. it's Nick from Marvel. What's going on, JJ? <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want, anything at all, please. <laughs> uh, but it was probably like that. And JJ Abrams had been busy, as you can imagine, particularly around the time when like Star Wars was getting sequels. Huh which is around the time when they were asking him to do Spider-Man, but coincidentally, J.J. Abrams had a son named Henry who was of working age and uh, <laughs> wanted to work in the entertainment industry and needed some credits to his name outside of production assistant on <laughs> The Force Awakens. <laughs> yeah, so there's this, and it's an out of continuity original take on Spider-Man that is brought to you by the Abramses. Uh, apparently the idea was cool. nobody was gonna buy a book by Henry Abrams, because who the hell is that? Right. Is he related to J.J.? But if you put J.J. Abrams and Henry Abrams, then you got yourself some sales. And no one, no one even reads the word Henry on the title. Exactly, they're like, J.J. Yeah. Abrams? Holy shit! I, or at least that's what Marvel thought was gonna happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, what? Marvel's- No, he makes movies. Why would anybody care? Oh, tell, let me tell you something. I mean, this is just a, a, a movie. On paper? On paper, it's a storyboard. But like, no, it, 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 if somebody had said to me they were making Quentin Tarantino's Justice League comic book, I'd read the shit out of it. Yeah, I guess. Right? Yeah, th but there's not too many directors I would put into that category. No. He's like one of the few. That's the thing, but and like- J.J. Abrams is not one. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, so what's the difference? Like, I, don't, I, know I don't think that like, J.J. Abrams, wow, he's such a great writer. He's a great like, storyteller. <laughs> what what story will he weave right. for Spider-Man? Yeah. And if J.J. Abrams is a great storyteller, well then who knows what Henry capable of. <laughs> but uh, so, yeah. so Marvel's way of rolling it out was to deliberately manipulate the audience on Twitter. <laughs> so what they did was uh, they did a countdown <laughs> until the announcement of the Abramses on a Spider-Man title. How'd they do that? Well, they could have uh, they could have put out some art about J.J. Abrams. They could have made some kind of vague tweets about Spider-Man. They could have said J.J. is coming. They could have said J.J. <laughs> is coming. That's a pretty uh, popular way to do it. Yeah. Uh, instead, what they did was they put out a big number four using webs. What? Oh, is there going to be a Spider-Man Fantastic Four series? Or yeah. what most people assumed was they were going to make a comic book adaptation of the unproduced Raimi Spider-Man 4. There's an <laughs> unproduced fourth Raimi Spider-Man movie? Oh, dude, yes. And it is so much worse than you think it is. <laughs> because it has Felicia Hardy in it, and oh. she plays Vultress, the daughter of the Vulture. What? And of course, the Vulture is the main villain, and Fart. <laughs> and that's all, you, that's all you need. That's all you need to know. Oh, but Bruce Campbell was finally going to be Mysterio in one sequence where Mysterio is already being arrested and brought to police headquarters. Oh, sweet. Everybody's hyped up about number four, and then the next day, three, and everyone went, oh, fuck! Oh, God damn it. It's a countdown. And then C.B. Sigvoski, editor-in-chief of Marvel, retweeted the three and said, what's happening? Is it gonna be a Fantastic Four comic? Is it gonna be an unproduced? No, but what could it be? What could be bigger wow. than that? I don't know, but stay tuned to find out. And what you got at the end of the countdown. Sabolski, <sighs> Sabolski, everyone is really upset that it's now three. That's Marvel. You're welcome, but I got your attention now. That's how we market things here. Piss off your audience. So <laughs> by the time we reach one, they release this tone deaf video of J.J. Abrams and his son Henry in a movie theater or in a screening room all by themselves. And they're like, hi, we're writing a Spider-Man comic book. And it's, <laughs> it's just, you could, you could hear Jaws hit the floor, but not in not the in way that way, Marvel yeah. was hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> in the way that Genies does when, <laughs> when he finds out that uh, Aladdin, fleeced. Aladdin fleeced him out of a free wish. Right, yeah. that is a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, you don't really want to advertise that this is all just a way for J.J. Abrams to get his son a, a, a writing credit, yeah. a job, yeah, a job, yeah, to like kickstart well, his career. Well, I've been the only one to hire my son for all of his life, so now I can prove he was hired by someone who wasn't directly related to me. There, yeah. there's a sequence. No one's in, gonna respond well to that. In one of the the the, the interviews, 
uh, they close out and Henry goes, thank you very much. And then he turns to his dad and goes, why am I thanking them? And they left it in. <laughs> and I'm like, that wasn't like funny or cute. <laughs> that, was, that was very insulting. Yep. And I think that they noticed because in the last issue, both of them have to write like a farewell letter at the end of the issue. And they both thank the audience and the readers mm. as their last thank you. Right. So I think that's their way of being like, you just asked your superstar Hollywood director <laughs> dad why you thanked the audience for watching your really inappropriate <laughs> teaser video. Yeah. So Woof. This, this, so it's already starting off on a wrong foot. Oh, yeah. The worst. But Marvel knows... Nepotism is not where you want to... It's not the foot you want to start No! On. Here's the thing. <laughs> if, if someone still came out with a very good story from this, yeah. we would forgive the fact that, like, all right, well, they got the credit because of who their dad was. Yeah. I wouldn't... <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Even if this book is awesome... Yeah. Which it could be. Which it very well could be. Uh, I'm still going to be annoyed. Yeah. At that. And I wasn't even there when it happened. Like, I wasn't on Twitter seeing this and just hearing about it after the fact. I'm like, that sucks. Yeah. That's awful. Wait, right. it sucks because you were tricked into thinking it was something that it wasn't? No, it sucks it's because sucks it only exists it because is. of nepotism. Yeah. It exists because Nick Lowe is so desperate to have J.J. Abrams' name on a Marvel comic, yep. he's willing to forego any pretense that this is made by merit. Lowe wants Abrams. Abrams wants his son to have a writing credit. Mm -hmm. So everyone's getting something they want. Yep. Except for the audience. Except for the audience, as is so often the case. Right. Again, if it were a good unless story. It's great. Unless, unless it's, it's great. A great. And I'll story. let you guys be the judge yeah, but, for this but if it out was of continuity a great story. story. Then it didn't need Then you that. don't need that hype and that bullshit. Then they could have the just said it's written by Henry Abrams. Who cares? Right. But about J.J. Abrams, let alone his son. Well, he's, just, again, he's making a new Star Wars if movie. If Quentin it's Tarantino yeah, made like a book. Made a book. It would, would be, read the crap out of it. Yeah, yeah. Marvel Knights was founded under the principle of like, Kevin Smith wrote a Daredevil book. Man. Like Joe Quesada used Hollywood contacts to bring Hollywood to comics, and yeah. it was good, especially at the time, and people were really hyped about it. And in fact, Kevin Smith tried to coerce Quentin Tarantino into writing comic books. QT, oh, yeah? of course, he was like, no. comic books are bullshit. Why would so, I yeah. ever do that? Yeah. So it's like Tim Burton, who's, <laughs> who's literally quoted in saying, anyone who knows my work knows that I would never read a comic book. So a good storyteller <laughs> can still a be douche. a good storyteller yeah. regardless of the medium. True. Yes. So it's possible that this could have some merit. Yeah. 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 The creative teams have always been about who you know, rubbing elbows. Like that's how you get into the industry and shit. Mm, yeah, but. For like 95% of them. <laughs> yes, but yeah. the audience isn't always hyper aware about that. Right, that's like whether what they, I don't quite the, understand. The audience doesn't, a, a, a vast majority does not meta read comics to the point where they're like, oh, well I know that he knows them and they bumped elbows with this and right. you gotta reach around over here. <laughs> like, for the most part, they're just like, yeah, oh, that's cool. That's supposed to be behind the scenes. Here's a writer. Yeah. You know, like maybe they might know them from like something they did. Like when Bendis came on the scene, they were like, oh, maybe I know him from that independent book he did. Right. Maybe. Yeah, and that that makes sense. You get a great, but superstar, also like independent. he came up from Independent Avenue. Right. And that's how he made his. If bones. Marvel was like, like Brian K. Vaughn, Marvel book. Yeah, which then he's done, like, yes. and like people all bought it because they yeah. want that, but they also they already knew that name. Yeah. It, yeah, but people know the name J.J. Abrams. Uh, yeah, exactly. but not as a writer. And Kevin Smith, I will say, is a known comic fan. Yes. So that makes sense too. Right. J.J. Abrams is just some guy. Well, but, but he works on nerd properties. Oh, yeah. so what that's, if he also loves it. comics? Yeah. Maybe Which he, he does. clearly doesn't because like... <laughs> oh boy. Oh no. Well, I just, it, it, because it's called divorced from any continuity. Right, and, we had to create a new villain. Yeah, and it's not like Nick Lowe got J.J. Abrams within the first two seconds. Like it's apparently like a year's in the making. Yeah, he didn't even And it only came around this. from him giving his son a job. So, yeah. Spider-Man Bloodline, uh, Marvel knew that there was gonna be some backlash, probably from the get-go, which is why mm -hmm. they were like, okay, well, people love Sarah Pichelli, so Sarah Pichelli. Yeah, there's our saving grace. She'll right. draw it, which, not her best work. Oh no. By a country mile. Oh dear. I mean, she probably read the story and she's like, what do you want me to draw? Oh, right, I, I, I feel like any artist who's given an opportunity to draw and get paid with a high profile assignment like this would probably want to put their best foot forward and I'm sure she is, but it's just, it's just not great. Also, they got like superstar artist Olivia Coppell to do the covers. Now, why they did that, I, I couldn't tell you. 
Like, <laughs> because Pichelli's great and she's done her own cover, so why do we need like two superstar artists? And I think it's just because they're like, don't, no, 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 forget about all the Abram stuff that we want you to buy the book because of. <laughs> yeah. Now, now it's like, hey, and Sarah Pichelli and Olivia Quipel. And Quipel's covers are not the best work he's ever done. Oh, they're no. so proud of the first issue cover that they put it on the trade and it's just this horrible image of Spider-Man yeah. with broken fingers and Mary Jane <laughs> just floating in space. I, I remember seeing this cover and then, and Marvel just trying to gaslight everybody going like, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> look at this freaking cover. And I'm like, this is one of the weakest covers I've ever seen in the modern space. Yeah. And they're like, no, this isn't just not that. It's actually better than most covers you've seen. You're just, you don't even know. Yeah. Wow. So I'm shocked they didn't have like a, an artist critique come out to be like, let me tell you why right. this cover is so... <laughs> well, maybe they tried, they couldn't find anyone. <laughs> yeah, no one was willing to <laughs> attach their name to it. Is it possible that Marvel wanted people who knew J.J. Abrams but didn't read comics sure. to be like, oh, J.J. Abrams that's, is that's, branching out into other yeah. media? That's why. That's I should buy it. more. I should buy this. That's, I've never bought a comic book in my life. Yeah, there's right. two reasons why Nick Lowe wants J.J. Abrams on a Marvel comic book. One to be Nick Lowe, the guy who brought J.J. Abrams into Marvel. The other reason is just because they want non-comic readers to read comic books. And maybe this'll do it. I mean, Kevin Smith brought people in, but like you said, Kevin Smith already had nerd cred and was an independent auteur who was huge at the time. He had fans. He had fans. J.J. Abrams does not have fans. No, he has people who go to his movies. Yeah. People like J.J. I'm yeah, sure he's, he's a thought of as a good director, yeah, right. like Steven like Spielberg. Spielberg. Yes, so and like 95% of people say, no. oh no, and the five other percent will be like, yay, another J.J. Abrams movie. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, no, it, he's well known. He's right. well known. And he's well not, liked. He doesn't yeah. have a cult following like Kevin Smith did, where people will go, people who are fans will consume anything, anything that he, he does, makes. not anymore, but no. at that time, yes. Yes. That yeah. is not what J.J. Abrams is. He's just like, everyone likes him. That's, right. that's the It'd thing. It'd be like, Mick G made a comic book. <laughs> like, Oh. Uh, oh, cool. Is that cool? Like, I, he made... <laughs> I don't you know, know. He made those Charlie and Angels movies and Terminator Salvation. Yeah. Which is not the worst Terminator movie. <laughs> so the book <laughs> opens it. with uh, utter blackness Ooh. and the word tiger being uttered clearly by Mary Jane because Mary Jane's sure. on the cover of this book. It's uh, actually, so, she's uppercutting him. Yeah. She's a big- Tiger, street. tiger. Yeah, she's a big Street Fighter fan. <laughs> but uh, New York is under siege, everyone's running. Mary Jane, however, is running towards the, mm. the, 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 the calamity, of course. That's not the direction you're supposed to run. That's the, no, that's the direction heroes run in. And by the way, oh. just in case you're wondering if there were gonna be any tropes in this book, there is a discarded doll <laughs> to show you how serious the situation is. If you're a big fan of the show. Yeah, there's blood on it. We like to point out that uh, discarded dolls are a good shorthand to show you not only is the situation serious, <laughs> children were... At, uh, yeah, there were children at threat, at threat. in this scenario. That, yeah. My favorite example of that is fucking Star Trek Generations. Yes. It's so blatant yep. and like out of nowhere. At, completely out of nowhere. We the don't get... space movie, a teddy bear is dropped. Yes. And, and you're like, oh, is a child gonna go back and try to get the teddy bear? Right. Is gonna have a scene? No. no. It's just to show you how sad it is they have to evacuate. <laughs> yeah, we don't even get like closure on that little kid. No. None whatsoever. So Mary Jane runs to her husband's aid, obviously Spider-Man. Uh, so we know we, we're taking a few liberties. We know <laughs> we know a few things. We know Spider-Man is Peter Parker. We know that the, he's married to Mary Jane. That's happening in this reality. Right. It's also how we know it's not in main continuity. All right. So uh, Spider-Man pulls himself out of wreckage. He makes a funny quip. Ouch. Uh, everyone is hilarious in this book. Oh, and good. you will find that as they realize, oh no, Abrams has to make Star Wars movies and we don't have time to make this goddamn comic book favor. We need to shorten things up. Everyone becomes a quip machine. They, they have a back and forth. Spider-Man makes a joke about how he doesn't even like red and blue anyway. Like the idea that he's gonna have to stop being Spider-Man hmm. because things are just so freaking dire. Right. Uh, but then they muse that he would laugh at that joke. What, who's he? Not gonna bury the lead, it's their son. Oh. Pete and Mary Jane have a son named Ben. Oh boy. Yep. And we reveal the new hot villain, <laughs> Cadaverous. Which, when I heard that, I went, ah, this book has no chance. <laughs> because they're so proud of it, you see. They were like, Cadaverous! I'm like, that it's, sucks. That's an adjective. <laughs> sounds like a Harry Potter spell. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, it brings the dead back to life. <laughs> Such a terrible name. Call it cadaver if you're going to go along that yeah, line. Yeah, just go cadaver. But no, cadaverous. Right. The other thing that kind of blew my mind when I saw cadaverous and his many cadavery minions. Uh, you mean xenomorphs? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like a combination of. They were like Ultrons. They, they're, they're all kinds of things. Mm. But I will give you this they don't all get defeated by killing Cadaverous. Oh, yay. You don't kill Cadaverous and they all just <laughs> droid army. Okay. Or Chitauri army. Right. But these Cadaver minions. Is Chitauri? Yeah. You gotta kill the mothership and they all just turn off. Oh, I didn't remember that. Yeah. It's also not like the Mangalores where like, you know, if you kill their leader, they all, <laughs> they all just, like, just stop fighting. Just, just pee their pants. <laughs> oh, no. They won't fight without the leader. But they also look exactly like Penance. Oh no. One of the biggest mistakes that Marvel made in the uh, early 2000s. Oh, don't tell Penance fans. You I know, mean, the red and the silver, you're going to repeat that and at spikes. some point. And it's spikes. And, and, and spikes. And expressionless face masks. Yep. And, oh, and they're in a Marvel comic. That's a lot. That's a lot of similarities. Yeah, that's close. Also the exact same hue of red. But anyway, yeah. uh, that's the only connection with Penance, is just that they look exactly like him. Right, okay. Uh, I don't know if maybe Pichelli was like, I don't want to, I, I don't want to th come up with another design. I mean, clearly Cadaverous and his minions are anime inspired. So anyway, uh, Cadaverous says that they need Spider-Man. He's oh. like, I need you. He also has a really annoying way of talking, which if you get a chance to take a look at this book, you'll see uh, they stretch out certain vowels. <laughs> it's, yeah. It is horrible to read. You know what he reminds me of? What's that? General Grievous. Yes! Because he has a cloak for no reason. Yes! And he's yeah, like a cyborg. A he's a cyborg. That's what he is. Yes. Good How about, Lord. Um, you know, it's the weird AI thing where it's like it's breaking up. I need you. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's like auto tune. Oh. It's not. It's more like, yeah. Like it's it's whatever you want it to be. Oh, right. Spider Man. <laughs> I, <laughs> I am General. Oh, no, I'm, I'm a, a cadaver. I've been trained in your uh, spider hearts. <laughs> yeah, no, that happens too. So, uh, oh you know, they're, they're, they're attacked by drones. Uh, Spider-Man is immediately defeated and he just screams to Mary Jane to run. And uh, instead she is skewered by Cadaverous. Oh. And then tossed off of a bridge. So Spider-Man swings out. Oh, hey, somebody remembers that Spider-Man doesn't like when women are thrown off bridges. <laughs> so we see that. But unlike the last time, he swoops in and he catches Mary Jane. And, uh, you know, so she doesn't, like, hit the water. Yeah, but she's already dead. But she is definitely dead. We don't really see what happens. We just cut to the funeral where Mary Jane is being buried. Spider-Man's with his aunt and their son, Ben. Spider-Man's right arm is mm. pretty much ruined. Yeah. And so when we get to the funeral, it's been removed. So oh. Spider-Man only has one arm. Wow. So I guess he's Yeah, stopped. that was not... Known. No. I Jesus. saw how damaged his arm it was. It looked pretty but damaged, realize... but it could have been like interpretive. But, but he has a healing fa ah, yeah, No, don't think about that. It's an alternate universe or whatever. It's, and it's written by somebody who doesn't read comic books. Right. So. Don't worry, he can grow two more in that same spot. <laughs> hey, I know a formula that'll fix this. <laughs> so that, that's that. 12 years later. Wow. And like, I love this because this is such a movie trope. It's just yeah. that well, normally what would happen is I'd cut to black and I'd have text, but. I, this is a comic book, so I guess so I'll just cut to black. black page, yeah. Hey, at least it's on this side of the page and not the other one. Right, where so it's you like, see oh the, no, oh, I can, I, see I can already see it. Yeah, yeah. It. that's true. They make you turn the page. So we see Ben, 12 years old, and his routine of getting up in the morning and going to school. Uh, he makes breakfast, but not for himself, but for Aunt May. She's still alive! Oh yeah, it's been only 12 years. Yeah. Plus, like, Aunt yeah. May is a new design. It's a different version of Aunt May. This isn't the frail, weak, thin old May. Ben goes to school. A school chum is being attacked by a bully. Ben throws that bully through a doorway, and the same doorway as a science class where a teacher's talking about momentum. Har, 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 har. <laughs> so then Ben goes to the principal's office. The principal talks about how Ben is always getting into trouble. Uh, so uh, the principal called Peter. Uh, Peter shows up, uh, which is rare because normally Peter is on assignment. He's usually doing photography jobs at the Daily Bugle that require him to leave the country. That Peter is not really a father. He 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 buried his wife. He's also not really Spider-Man anymore. No, I he guess. did he ditched the whole thing. Spider-Man's yeah. done. Now he's Keanu. Now Reeves. he's just Keanu Reeves. <laughs> That's what he looks like. <laughs> it's a great idea. <laughs> You know, in 2018, maybe he would do that. Ben is kind of surprised. He's like, what are you doing here? Yeah. Peter's like, oh, I was actually between flights and they must have called my cell and I had it on, unlike usual. 
uh, when it comes to you because I try to avoid you. Is <laughs> Peter trying to avoid Ben because he reminds him of his wife and maybe it's just too painful to look at him? It's it's anything sure. you want it to be. It's every trope that's possible right. about that kind of any thing. Of wow, so like Peter Parker is, is a, a dead ruined dead. character. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yes. He, but yes. But maybe he'll redeem himself at the end of the Quite book. possibly. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, yeah. He better. He does. He okay. Does. Ben has no patience for his father, you know, because he's like, you're not around. You don't take care of Aunt May. You don't take care of me. How young was he when uh, she died? Uh, what? I'm they guessing like four or five. Very young. Three. Three. Oh, there you go. So he's 15 now. He's okay. 15. All right. So would he remember that his, his dad was Spider Man at he, all? He, no, he does not remember his dad was. Well, he never knew his dad was Spider Man, and he doesn't remember his mom very well at all. Right. He says that he only remembers her from the pictures. Right. Peter and Ben get into an argument. Ben basically says, you know what? You can drop me off right here. I'm close enough to the house. Peter <laughs> obliges. He gets out. And then Peter just drives to the airport to go to another country right. to take photos of something that's going on. Uh, Ben goes up to the front door of Aunt May's house where he lives, and uh, his hand gets stuck on the knob. Oh, this no. is another origin He's story. Turning into Spider-Man. It's, it's another origin story. So if you saw Into the Spider-Verse, you've seen it done better. So <laughs> Ben uh, is stuck to the knob. He tries to pull himself off, and he wrenches the door free from his hinges. Uh, he goes to his room to listen to music and hold a picture of his mother, uh, Aunt May comes in and says, like, do you want to explain why the door is destroyed? With a smile on her face, knowing that Ben has developed spider powers. And also, I guess, that May always knew or kind of knows that Pete... May maybe knows he told her at some point. After Mary Jane's death, there's no way that May wouldn't know he's Spider-Man. Yeah. But there's a question as to whether May always knew in this continuity that he was sure. Spider-Man. She does suggest that, like, you're going through changes like Peter did. And so I think in this reality, Aunt May always knew that Peter was Spider-Man. Hmm. That's, that's a big change. Right. <clears throat> or the she only... inferred it from learning about it later. She's True. Like, oh, that I know explains was... all those other stuff. Yeah, yeah like, like after MJ was... died, he just, like, came clean. Just yeah. Like, yeah. I, I need to unburden my soul. Right. Well, where did my arm go? <laughs> So, Good point. I mean, okay. He could have made up some fucking lie. Yeah, well, I just oh, think of pictures. Oh, he's caught in the crossfire yeah, of the that, battle Which is cadavers. usually how he explained his injuries yeah. anyway. But Pe uh, ben, ben Jane's dead. You know what? I'm not going to be Spider-Man anymore. So it's I'm okay just to tell, fucking tell you. And I'm yeah. only going to tell Aunt May. Yeah. So uh, Ben goes to school and we meet Faye Ito, the other character in this movie. I mean, book. <laughs> For whatever reason, the teacher says last name first, then first name when she walks in the door. So she says Ito, Faye. Uh, her name is Faye Ito, but people call her Ito Faye. I don't know why this is a thing, but it is, and I'm mentioning it. Last name first? Yeah, that's what the teacher says when she walks in the door. That's, that's weird. Just dumb. It's just a, a, a device by which we can have her be introduced as Ito Faye. I don't know why, and I couldn't care less. So she's covered <laughs> in green paint. Ben notices and uses this as his move. Ah. He's like, hey. I was wondering if uh, I could really use some green paint. I was wondering if you knew where I could find some. <laughs> She's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> so uh, he doesn't take this as an opportunity to crawl into a hole and die. Instead, he just takes this as a, a golden opportunity to keep pressing. Right. So he says, oh, you're a sophomore, right? I'm a freshman. <laughs> That's not something you want to point out to a sophomore you're hitting on, but okay. <laughs> so she talks about how she was spray painting someone who deserved it. She was, she was getting revenge on someone who'd done wrong mm. because she believes that with great power comes great responsibility or someone with license to commit property damage requires great amounts of spray paint. So we cut to Cadaverous. We need to check in with him 12 years later. Cadaverous just sitting in his monitor room, eating sausage links. Still all round? Yeah. Yeah. It defeated Spider-Man. What happened? I assume well, it took over the world. Spider-Man got away. So he, he gave up. Because all They'll he wanted was Spider-Man. That's all he needed. <clears throat> all right. So Cadaverous eats his sausage links and stares at uh, Nora Free. I mean, um, this woman in a back to tank across oh, from him. no. And how he they're, they're, he's never going to give up on her. Well, he needs Spider-Man's blood or his DNA or yep. some shit. Yeah, because Reed Richards doesn't know anything. Reed Richards is not in this book. So <laughs> Maybe exactly. he's not in this universe. He is in this universe. Fuck so <laughs> Peter gets on the plane, Aunt May calls him up, hey, your son's developing spider powers, and you're not here, you're being a deadbeat dad, you suck at this. And he's like, I don't care, hang up. It's the scene. How ben, come he has a normal person hook hand? 
Right. Why does he have like a crazy science hand? Right. Especially when we establish that Tony Stark exists in this universe. Right. And it's 12 years of the future. Right. I suppose you're supposed to relate him to someone who might be missing an arm now, who wouldn't have a crazy science arm, exactly. and just have a normal person. Yeah. Prosthetic. What's the point of ripping his arm off if I'm going to replace it with a cool prosthetic that would be like a regular arm? Right. Then it's like he doesn't actually lose anything. Yeah. Also, why do we need like to replace everyone's arms again? We right. just talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's he lost true. an arm. This is to show you how serious yeah, the, the book is. That's yeah. true. That's There's true. actual There's another consequences trope. We did time. do that. Yeah. But uh, I don't think they know that's a comic book trope. So Ben has a dream of his mother covered in blood. They all get enveloped in blood. Ugh. Blood. He wakes up, he's stuck to the ceiling, haha. -ha. Aunt May comes in, she's like, oh, well, there you go. You got your spider powers. And he's like, what are you talking about? See, he, she sends him to the attic, and she's like, here are a couple of boxes of your dad's, <laughs> dig through them. She sends him to the attic. You have to live up there now. Yep, here's your bucket of fish heads. <laughs> no, you're, you're no longer a human you live boy. In the attic. You live in the attic. That's where, where the spiders, spiders go. Because <laughs> I hate Spider-Man because I'm Aunt May. Right. No, she's like, <laughs> go to the attic, rubbish through your dad's stuff. She's not even going to bother to explain it. She's like, you right. have to You'll go on this journey. You'll figure it out, yeah. Just dig through his stuff, and you, when you dig deep enough, you'll find the truth. And when he does, he finds the Spider-Man costume, and he's like, whoa. What? What well, the I fuck did is Spider-Man? No, he knows it. Well, uh, okay, it he knows it's Spider-Man. Because uh, there was like a report that like basically after Cadaverous like fucked off, uh, somebody, presumably Peter, said to the press that like Spider-Man saved the day at the end. Oh, like, because he did. Because uh. there's an implication that like there are other heroes in this universe, or at least there were before Cadaverous, and so they're all dead. So like there are no superheroes left. What? What? Peter is Spider-Man. His father is Spider-Man. He's the son of Spider-Man. And all he knows are like rumors, you what? know, about who Spider-Man was. Like I've heard, you know, James T. Kirk was a great man. <laughs> but that was <laughs> another life. Yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man right. was a great man, so from what I hear. But I know the man behind Spider-Man. He's a deadbeat dad and a pathetic loser. Right. So I guess everyone's wrong. Spider-Man sucks. What? And now I am Spider-Man, and that blows. I don't want to be Spider-Man because oh, Spider-Man's my dad, and my dad's an asshole. So. Of course, he's also 15, so he's like going a mile a minute, and he's feeling like 18 emotions at once. So, mm -hmm. you know, he's like, my dad sucks, but I have spider powers. Oh my God, what does that mean? Maybe I'll look up Spider-Man, see what that's all about. He's looking at Spider-Man on his phone. But then, Faye <laughs> leans over her shoulder at school, and she's like, what are you looking at? And she bites him on the neck. She's a fucking vampire. Right? <laughs> yeah. like, she is a superhero, <laughs> but not a vampire. Oh. She has no powers. Uh. Don't get excited. He breaks his phone from being surprised, and then blames it on being dropped. It's just a fun way to show that he has uh, spider strength, but it's like there's a lot of like blink and you'll miss it moments because you throw like, a kid through a door before. Yeah, we know exactly. Like yeah. we know you have superpowers, but uh, actually, apropos of throwing that bully through a door, Faye heard about that, so now you're on my radar because oh, you're a hero. You right. do the right thing. You to to protect the innocent, which is what I want to do. Yeah, somehow, even though you look like you weigh about seventy five pounds. That's right. I'm not sure how you did that, but yeah. let's just ignore that. But let's just focus on the, 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 the things that we can control, which is right. like that you have some kind of gumption. You want to help the little guy, like I do. So give me your address, I'll meet you later. He's, okay. like, he's like, fuck yes, I'm going to get a hand job from the sophomore. <laughs> if this were an edgy book, he I'd actually be say worried that. about doing it myself because I r might rip my dick off. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why he's really excited because then she yeah. can do it because she doesn't have super strength. Exactly. So, then Ben immediately goes to his house and he takes the Spider Man costume, puts it on the grill to burn it. And he's like, I am normal, 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 normal. That's one of the things he says. What? I'm a normal person and I can't have Spider-Man in my life. I'm gonna get a girlfriend pretty soon. It's gonna be awesome. And I can't have her find out that I'm not normal. And never mind the fact that this Spider-Man costume's been in the attic for like 15 years or whatever. Uh, I need this to go away. He's basically just trying to repress his specialness. And Aunt May's like, okay, you can like, you, you, can, you can say and feel those things, but do we have to burn his costume? He burns it Oh. and says, I'm cool, I'm normal, as he burns it. Uh, then Faye shows up and she is wearing this. Uh, yeah. What? That is a design. That is a Marvel Catwoman yes. wearing a gas mask design. She, you know what Faye's doing? She is making Earth One Catwoman look subtle and diminutive. <laughs> Faye's here and she's like, oh, thank God it's you. I went to the wrong address before and I scared the hell out of some people. And he's like, what? what, what is this? What are you wearing? And she's like, it's me, it's Faye. And he's like, yeah. Yeah, I, I know, yeah, I obviously. Know. And she's like, well, we're gonna go out. We're gonna, we're gonna do some good in this world. So you need a costume that covers your face. And he's like, oh. So he runs out to the grill and it's Ash. And yeah. then Aunt May says, that's okay. Your dad had more. So Aunt May gives Ben a Spider-Man costume. Faye's like, wow, that is a really accurate Spider-Man costume. <laughs> that is way better than my costume. What the hell? Right. <laughs> Well, 
One Wait is dressed, upstage me, Parker. I, I guess. Like, one of them's dressed like an urban warrior, and the other one's dressed like Spider-Man. You know, like, yeah. it's, I feel like her costume's a lot more original because she came up with it. True. Whereas Ben just grabbed one. So, yeah. Well, she didn't really give him a lot of heads up. This is true. She just she just said, I'm coming over. Right. She didn't say, like, we're going to leave someplace and go, like, yeah. wear like a buildings. hoodie. Stop yeah, wear a hoodie. Guys. So, uh, Cadaverous, of course, is getting his legions ready. Where is this happening? So, Cadaverous gathers his minions. Uh, he's preparing for something. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, what are Faye and uh, Ben up to? Well, they're, they're going to go uh, to a building that uh, has bad people in it, and they're going to spray paint it. Like, douchebags live here. <laughs> Because <laughs> solid plan. Like there was a uh, there, there was a there was a market nearby that doesn't pay their coworkers uh, health insurance, so she wrote healthcare on the side of their building. Cool. So he's got her on his shoulders, and she's spray painting it. And then the cops show up, and they're like, "All right, you're both under arrest. Come on!" Like they the guy's got the the cuffs out. He's like, "Okay, yeah. kids, get ready to go to jail." Yeah. So so Faye goes, "Are you ready to be a hero?" Because we're gonna run, and she just grabs him, and they run away. <laughs> And, that's what uh, heroes do, they run. That's right. Uh, so they run, and Ben says, wait a minute, I can do something. And she's like, what'd you say? And he goes, I can do something! And he triumphantly shoots webs and swings her out of there. And oh. has never done this before in his life. That's right. He has... He has web shooters, too. We don't establish those, but he does have them. Are they web shooters, or does he have organic webs? Great question. We're not going to touch it. We don't. Because oh. it was just a costume. Yes. Well, maybe the costume had built in web shooters? Or that, maybe this Peter Parker had organic Either way. Webs. Doesn't matter. I, mean, I guess we real never Peter Parker them. did have organic webs for a time. That's true. That's true. Also, he had to learn how to like shoot webs. Yes. Well, Ben's really he's a fast learner. So they swing across the city and he's like, My dad was Spider Man and he's a real asshole and I hate him and I'm sorry and blah. So they're getting being filmed by cell phone footage. And uh, you know they they're they're bad at this, so they smash into a billboard that commemorates the passing of the Avengers. The Avengers, coincidentally, are all the characters who are Avengers in the movies because <laughs> like it's a movie person. Yeah. He's like, wait, wait, who are the Avengers again? Uh, let me just take a look at my my Blu-ray here. Chris Hemsworth, uh, Chris <laughs> Evans, okay, Scarlett uh, Johansson, Scarlett Johansson, and uh, the Hulk, and the Hulk, and the got Hulk. it, and Green Hulk, got it. You know, where's Tony Stark? He wasn't there. Oh. Yeah. He is in this universe. I think yeah. I think they deliberately didn't put Iron Man on the cover. Number one, because Iron Man didn't die in the big battle. And number uh, two, because... We already have a giant robot person. Well, we, You're the enemy. Yeah, but we want... I think they want to, like, bury the lead. Right. Like, where's, where's Iron Man? Yeah, oh. without Iron Man. He's going to show up in but, this um, fucking book. Yeah. All right. So, uh, you know, Peter yeah. is you know, in the third world taking pictures of refugees when he sees on the TV at this... Spider-Man. At this camp that uh, Spider-Man in his back... And he's in New York, and he's like, oh, no. Meanwhile, you know who else is watching that broadcast? Cadaverous. Oh, no. He's like, but, but he's the key. I need him. So, great. Even though I was already rallying my army to go do something, now I can actually use them for something specific. Oh. Yeah, before they were just getting my groceries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I actually uh, use them as a uh, giant HelloFresh team. Yeah, they yeah, They deliver yeah. a lot of groceries to other people because they just go throughout. That's just how I fund things. my operation. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so Cadaverous' plan should start here, but because we wanted to have a bad guy in the book earlier, we just made up that he was going to do something else yes. before. Yes. Okay. Cadaverous blows up Oscorp. Why? I guess because it's a well-known building? Yes. And he wants to make trouble? Yes. So Spider-Man goes to he's Oscorp. He's trying to draw out Spider-Man. I think that's what it is. And it ha just, he picks Oscorp because because it's Norman Osborn is rich and owns a lot of stuff. Well, and I think it's because the, the, Os the Osborns are connected with Spider-Man in some way, maybe it'll draw him out, oh. like maybe that specific target. Here's the thing, I can destroy a fake landmark in New York. Right. And then I'm not a terrorist. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Is, is Harry Osborn in this book? Uh, no. Or, okay. There no, are no, no Osborns in this there's book. There's no Osborns. Is the Other company on the even side running? of that building. That's right. Hmm? Is the company even functional? Like, does it work? Run? They they say it does. Like, it's there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it looks, it's lit up. Yeah. I guess in this universe, Norman Osborn's just a guy. Or he already, maybe he was already defeated. Yeah, you but know? we still named the build. Still called Oscorp. Well, it's, like, it's the name of the company. Yeah. What do you it's want? The name of the company. What it's run by the board. He doesn't. <laughs> he's not in charge. Yeah, he was Green Goblin. He's gone. <laughs> and we didn't change the name because. Uh, Why would we? I don't well, know. It's kind of badass. It's a publicly traded company. Yeah. You know, uh, it takes a lot of a lot of votes to change a company name. Yeah, we have to like we rebrand. Well, get a new website. It's a lot of Work. Ah, fuck it. So uh, <laughs> Spider-Man arrives, too little too late, the whole building's destroyed, and he's looking for survivors. Thankfully, he runs into J.J. Abrams' friend from those fucking movies. <laughs> no! What? 
Because there's no way that's not that him. That is him. Because no matter where I am, <laughs> if I'm watching a J.J. Abrams production, that fucking guy is in it just to rip me out of the thing I'm watching. <laughs> Whether it's Star Trek or Star Wars. But, but so he's funny. so, you know, universal. He could go yeah. anywhere. He's an everyman, you know? Like he's, he just, he looks like a regular person. And that's yeah. kind of fun. Until I see him. <sighs> yeah, until I see him and then I remember, oh no, he's just J.J. Abrams' friend. It's so funny because until I knew that, until you told me that, you didn't notice he was him. the guy from Heroes. Oh, yes. And it was like, what is the guy from Heroes yeah, it's doing like, in this He's movie? the guy from Heroes because of J.J. Abrams. Yeah. Yep. So Spider-Man saves him. They get besieged by uh, by Penance drones. They literally just jump over them. And then uh, he drops like a large steel girder on top of them. And mm. I guess they're defeated because the paramedics just easily help this guy out and he leaves. Oh. So that's yeah, fine. They defeated every... Every well, single every, one of those drones. Yeah, with a perfect. Even though this guy had like... Beam. beam. Hundreds of drones. Yes. Yeah, and some of them were definitely not hit by it because they're over here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's right. Oh. So Spider-Man goes home and who's there but Peter Parker. He took an early flight to talk his son out of being Spider-Man. Sure. You know, cadaver is going to come after your precious fluids if you go around dressed like That's that. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah, why do you think I stopped being Spider-Man? Right. You know... I was scared of cadaver. <laughs> Cadaverous. Cadaverous. Fuck. <laughs> there is one shot in here where his suit is ripped to shreds. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, two panels. Yeah. And the rest of it, it's not. No, it's a wide shot. Not... Yeah, it's too... I, yeah, I... but the next scene where he's yeah. in his bedroom wearing, the, obviously, the same costume, <laughs> mm -hmm. also not destroyed. No. Uh, well, he got here's a new the thing. One. Uh, or he fixed it. Uh... Sarah Pichelli is drawing this book over a period of 15 months, this five-issue miniseries. Oh, boy. So, like, I can imagine that she may have drawn those panels between other panels and just gotten confused. Yeah. Or, uh, Well, at some point, he had to get a new... Mary, uh, Aunt May said he had, she had more she, suits. He had more suits, maybe, yeah. Maybe he came home, he looked disheveled, Mary, uh, Aunt May gave him a new suit. Oh, I got, like, 30 of these. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Ex exactly. So Ben is on the phone. He's texting with Faye. Faye says she's coming over. Meanwhile, Peter lets himself into Ben's room and basically is like, being a hero is for the birds. It sucks, <laughs> and it gets your wife killed, so don't bother. It gets your wife killed. Joke's on you, Dad. I'm not married yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got you got a you got a little girlfriend there. I yeah, see. and well, she'll definitely she's die. She's gonna die. She's gonna die. It's a guarantee. Do he you want say her to that, die or he's, no? He's just like, don't do this. Like, also like. You know, so but the only thing I do like about the interaction between Ben and Peter usually throughout this book is that whenever they start talk, they start talking back and forth. Usually Peter's like, "Whatever you're doing is bad," and Ben's like, "What do you know? You're a deadbeat dad." And both of them have a good point, <laughs> um, but it always devolves into a dialogue where each of their speech balloons overlaps the other because uh, they're talking over each other. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, "Hey, way to go! That's some pretty good lettering." from Joe Caramanga, who's a guy I actually know personally, and he is really good at his lettering. <laughs> but anyways, that's a, that's a high compliment I will give to this book, is the right. lettering is solid. All right. Uh, but then suddenly, the wall explodes, and oh, Cadaverous no. comes out, and he stabs Peter through the chest with three huge spikes, not unlike his wife, oh. and then leaves with him. So Cadaverous, before he like absconds with Peter's corpse, yeah. Yeah. Uh, says, thanks for letting me follow you, goodbye. He uh, stabbed him through at least one, if not two, lungs, yes. the spine, and the yeah. intestines. Oh, yeah, he's dead. He's dead. He's not dead, and he will recover from these wounds. So, uh, then Ben has a waking nightmare that is not unlike his blood dream, but this time his dad and his mom are in the blood dream. Uh, then he, like, wakes up or snaps out of it, and he's suddenly outside the house, and... Faye is there because she said she was coming over and she's like, there's a hole in your house where there shouldn't be a hole. Explain yourself. And he's like, there's a monster. It came. It took my dad. And so he says, we need help. And she says, I think I know who we could go to. So they go to Stark Industries and Faye tries to yell at the receptionist to get their way, which if you've ever tried to raise your voice to a receptionist is the only way you can assure yourself you will never get anywhere <laughs> because receptionists run the building. Right. You must make nice with those people. Yeah. But uh, so she calls some Iron Man drones to take them away. But before they leave, because Ben mentioned Spider-Man, Riri Williams arrives, who is like the CEO of Stark Industries. And she's what? like, you want to talk to Tony Stark? Well, come with me. And it's like, and I know exactly what happened. I am befuddled. Here's what happened. They were writing this scene and they're like, we need a character who will be like an Iron Man Jr. Does Tony Stark have any kids? And Nick Lowe said, no, but we are pushing Riri Williams. So 
make it that. And they were like, sure. Whatever. Oh, I'd love to. So okay. they did. Well, I don't care at all, so right. fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so wow. Okay. I don't know who Pepper is. I don't know who Happy is. I, it doesn't matter. Well, I, I need them to also be a superhero. Yeah. Like, because it's all about the next generation. I need right. them to be the next generation yeah. of heroes. I need someone who's going to be the next generation. Who's yep. that going to be? And oh, they're like, oh, I the one it. we're making right now. I got her. Yeah. So we see that Peter is in Cadaverous's lair. He is in his own back to tank with <laughs> an impossible amount of tubes protruding <laughs> from his stomach. <laughs> He's also possibly in the Matrix. Yeah. He may be in the right? Matrix. That's it why is, it looks like It is Keanu very Matrix inspired. Yeah. But uh, you see that like the tubes are connected to other tubes with like leech creatures from X Files. <laughs> it doesn't really come up, but like they're like lampreys. Yeah. Let's just say that like Cadaverous has Peter Parker and his special blood, which he needs, and he's using it for his nefarious ends. Okay, Faye, Oh no. Faye also has a leech-like mask on her face when she oh, is the yeah. weird cat yeah. person, and it's on her back. That's true, yeah. it is not related. It's not? No. Wow. No. She, Leeches are just big in this universe. Yeah, her superhero name is The Marker. Because she marks Because she marks stuff. Why not the tagger? Uh, uh, that's too old, Ethan. Were you born in the 90s? <laughs> I like that the volume of blood which is coming out of him in those tubes. No, those tubes are just red. Oh, they're those just red, red tubes. tubes okay. Just like cadavers okay, wires. But the Cadaverous? volume of anything Sorry. coming through those, you would have no blood left. Which you would he have does no have a problem with. Left. He's like, oh no, we've run out of blood. Yeah. Also, Peter's still alive. It though. would take about five seconds. Yes, I know. <laughs> Like, yes. they're like this big around. I know. It's those are here's the thing. I'm those not are like getting high energy like <laughs> I'm not getting blood anymore. I'm just sucking out all of his organs. Right. Uh, okay. But even Again. that would take another few seconds yeah. based on how big and how numerous these tubes are. It doesn't make any sense. There, there's a it doesn't matter. They don't they don't they never address it. Just, it just explain. looks scary. Yeah. yeah. And gross. That's all it is. That's, That's all I the, want. The size of the tube is saying, look at how hard we're working to keep him alive. Yeah. I guess. Oh, maybe some of those, it's going in? I guess that's it. Some stuff's going in, they, some coming out. No, because... <laughs> okay, so like, what, what they need is coming out, and they've developed this thing that makes these drones, and I guess that's what's going in to preserve him. Yeah. So, and yeah. his body is like it's transforming a, it into no, something else. He's no, like a factory. I wish for, it were, but oh. he, like, no, he, they run out of fluid oh, they need. they do run out. So they can get Ben. But uh, oh, anyway, so she takes, Riri Williams takes Ben and Faye to the like Avengers Memorial Garden mm. where underneath one of the statues is a secret elevator that takes them to a bunker where Tony Stark is drinking himself to death because he's the lone survivor of the Avengers and he's felt bad for 12 years and has just been living in a basement drinking alcohol and eating frozen pizza. Cool. Yep, and he looks like your taupe cool uncle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what Tony Stark would do. He would become a recluse. Yeah. Because so, he certainly doesn't like the spotlight. No. Well, you know, maybe he... The, Did Pepper die, too? Pepper's not involved. Doesn't doesn't matter. They don't talk about Pepper. It's it's about him. What's she doing? Is she trying to get him it's out of this? not a character in this funk? universe. I, it's see, not a thing. Just, Pepper doesn't exist. If, don't don't if, worry about if, Pepper. If they said, like, I lost Pepper and I lost Hope, like, doesn't come then, up. I, then I would be like, okay, maybe he would become a It right. doesn't come up. Know. That's okay. so lame. No, so, it's just he lost the Avengers. That's what he's mourning. Right. Has Riri been Ironheart or Iron... Yes. Okay, so... Why isn't she a superhero in this world? Because she doesn't want to be anymore. Oh. They, don't, they don't talk about her being Ironheart until she becomes Ironheart again. Ah, uh, okay. But she hates working for Iron Man, she hates Tony Stark, and she hates being the CEO of Stark Industries. And she says at one point to herself, God, I just almost quit two seconds ago. And it's just because- Why didn't it, you? Because, it's, because she doesn't mean what she says, like uh. no one in this book. So uh, Ben introduces himself to Tony, Tony is drunk and doesn't know who Ben is, so he autographs his face, <laughs> and then uh, they go back and forth until ultimately Tony Stark realizes that Ben is the son of Spider-Man, he's like, oh, well, Spider-Man was a friend of mine. Uh, meanwhile, at the cadaverous base, Peter's under glass, he's unconscious, and a lone drone approaches Peter and touches the glass. What's that all about? They'll talk mm. about that later. Okay. So, uh, Stark explains that Cadaverous is the result of a bunch of Stark mistakes, including Stark Tech, which he's co-opted to use in his evil uh, Cadaverous yeah. experiments. <laughs> okay. Sure. His cadaverous experiments, yes. I'm not going to get into Tony Stark's dialogue because it makes me enraged. <laughs> 
Why? Here's a line that he says because Ben says like, why did you quit? Why are you here? Uh, Tony Stark wearing his Vans leans over to Ben and says, there's nothing I can do. I'm too old, my small, young, naive, little red haired compadre. I put myself down here and all I can do is eat this greasy pizza and talk to a virtual friend. I live in a basement, okay? Tony Stark lives in a basement. This is the dialogue you can come to expect on every panel in this book. He, he kind of reminds me of Flynn from Tron Legacy. Yes. When he it's like, the only reckless. way to win is not to play. Yeah. And he like, but he's not trying a to robe win. and shit. Yeah. And just like, <sighs> yeah. You know, and he grows his hair out and stuff and mm -hmm. gets old. And that's like, that's the same fucking character. Yeah. What yeah. do you do? Except yeah, he's, he's not Flynn. disheveled. Like, his beard is manicured. Yes. Yes. His tail is yeah, clean. He's, got, he's, he's wearing a suit he's clean. jacket. He's vain. Yeah. That's the thing, yeah. You know? he, he's 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 become like zen and like weird. Like, oh, I'm just chilling by myself in this basement. Yeah, but like, I'm not he, gross. He's not as cool as Flynn. Like, Flynn is more like I got zen, whereas yeah. Stark is like, I got sad. Yeah, but he talks like he's like he's given up. Well, he yeah, but also like he's just like oh, whatever, man. Yeah. Oh, no, she's, she's you know you just like he's very calm. No, but like he's not like deranged. He's manic. Like he'll be calm one minute and then he'll be right. yelling the next, but okay. still yelling calm stuff. It's right. very inconsistent. Yeah. So well, we see that in Cadaver's lair, the uh, the the Nora Freeze uh, analog woman yeah. under glass is uh, healing as a result of Peter's blood. Right. Uh, so. They're being chased by monsters, that is to say, Stark and his new young friends. So he's like, I'll only say this one time, so everyone better pay attention, because here's what's going on. Here's the flashback. <sighs> the uh, Cadaverous is actually Ivan Renz. Ivan Renz is no one created for this story. Yeah. And Ivan Renz's mentor, Minka Tross. And Minka Tross is the woman under glass. Okay. Ivan Renz and Minka Tross were Stark employees or whatever. It's not really Stark employees. They were they were revolutionary geneticists, microbiologists, whatever you want to call them. They're scientists, Marvel scientists, which <laughs> uh -huh. means they're good at all these they're different super things. Super scientists. Right. They they have many disciplines, and they had this this wild hair up their ass about reanimating the dead and like saving and healing people and. You know, so they worked for Stark, and they implemented Stark technology, and you know, it went it went awry, obviously, based on what Cadaverous <laughs> looks like, and uh, you know, yeah. and and Minka died, so uh, oh. Ivan went nuts, and uh, their and, experiments. Yeah, no, actually, their experiments murdered Minka, and so Ivan dug up her corpse and then put her under glass. Yeah, to bring her back. To it's bring their her whole back. thesis. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's okay. why his name is Cadaverous. Right. Uh, and also, they, but it's not like that's enough, right? No, also, after the experiments went awry, S.H.I.E.L.D. stepped in and stole their research and then gave it to Richard and Mary Parker, who were scientists what? that worked for S.H.I.E.L.D. And they figured out how to refine it and then destroyed all their experiments with one exception, that being, a spider, and that spider is the same spider that bit Peter and made him into Spider-Man. Oh, also, Richard and Mary used their unique blood in those experiments, so like they need spider blood, Spider-Man's blood, to fix the cadaverous problem because it's linked with their genetic code. That is too much. Yes. So Damn it. That's why they're after Spider-Man, they need his blood. And in fact, after the fight, when Spider-Man got away, it was okay because Ivan had, cadaverous Ivan, had a hunch that Spider-Man was the linchpin, the key, and they keep talking about the key, Spider-Man's the key, where his blood is. And so they keep talking about this key, and he had some suspicion, so he took some of Spider-Man's leftover blood from the fight, went away, and that's why he was disappeared for 12 years. He spent all that time, like, checking it, analyzing it, realizing, yes, Spider-Man's blood is the key, but Spider-Man's now gone, so he's been waiting for Spider-Man to resurface so he could take his blood and reanimate Minka Tross, his mentor slash woman he loves. But he knew that Peter's parents were the scientists who, so why didn't he just track them down? You know, like, why did it have to be Spider-Man? The, the Link was well, not Spider-Man, it was the Parkers. Well, because remember, they died early. Like, they died young. 
Yeah. So like yeah, they're the out time, of the But he knew they were the like oh, right. the janitors they of this. It, but that doesn't mean that their son got bit by the spider. Like, but it, but he was. He was. Yeah, but and I also he, he doesn't he, know that. But your point is why didn't he go after like a child Peter Parker? Yeah, and be like, hey, like I I know your parents were doing some shit. Like yeah. I gotta find the Spider-Man guy. Like maybe you know him. Maybe your aunt knows him. Oh oh you know, oh, like, oh, oh I'm sorry because I thought you were talking about him going after young Peter. Well, he yes, he could have gone after Ben, but he didn't. No, no, I mean like. Uh, he didn't know Aunt that, May or Peter. He didn't know Spider-Man was also Richard and Mary. Parker. I know, but he would know that her family or their family might know something about where Spider-Man came from. Yeah, that's true. You know, it's like, what do I know? I know uh, Mary yeah. and Richard Parker yeah. are the people who uh, worked on worked on this, this science yeah. and this thing. Yeah, and I know that Spider-Man. Is the result of their experiment. Right. So how do I find out who Spider-Man is? Well, let me talk to the only like living really relative relatives, to the park. Ransack the house. Yeah. Like, I don't understand. No. <laughs> well, because we didn't really think this through. Ugh, yeah. So then uh, as Stark and company try to escape, they're attacked by reanimated cyborg versions of his dead no. friends, the Avengers. Oh, Jesus. So of that's how we <laughs> pad this out. So um, they were defeated by Cadaverous as well. Oh, yeah. That's what happened. Yeah, they were killed by Cadaverous, and Cadaverous recovered Cadaverous the bodies. Cadaverous defeated Thor. Yeah, he killed Thor. Yeah, and, and the Asgardians never came to Earth and wrecked their revenge. Nope, nope. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I guess cool. they couldn't, because that happens. Ragnarok on Asgard. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. Ragnarok happened, like, right as this was happening, oh, sure. so they weren't able to... Well, that's actually... That, that's how he fulfilled the Ragnarok prophecy oh, of the death yeah. of Thor. There we go. Anyway, so Minka Tross is now reanimated. They have the blood, so he reanimates... Minka, so Minka has been resuscitated, but she's wrong. And that's the idea that Stark mentions is that all of Cadaverous's experiments of reanimation came out wrong or unnecessarily violent. Right. Or Bride of Frankenstein-ish. Yep, so she comes out and she's like, what the fuck, I died and now I'm here? But like, Ivan, you were terrible at this. And now I'm like changing and I can feel my bones you breaking. You're Ivan the Terrible at this. She talks about well, how she's- missing an eye or Well, something? no, her eye is morphing into a, oh. a monster eye because oh, she's no. like, I'm I'm changing, you fucked it up. Like you reanimated me, but I'm not like fully done. But I'm all done. gross. But I'm all gross and I'm getting grosser. I'm, I'm just human DNA, right? There's no other weird DNA that's inside <laughs> of me. Well, I may have used like, okay, well don't get mad. <laughs> but like I may have used some spider DNA. Spider? What? <laughs> spiders are horrible. I hate spiders. Oh, well, then you're not going to like this next part. <laughs> but listen, I ran out of blood from Peter, but like if we get his son, who's smaller and has less blood, <laughs> we'll definitely be able to, to well, create got, a stabilizing agent that'll, like that'll fix you. 80% of the blood I yeah. need. I only need a little bit more. Uh, yeah, sure. And then and you'll be completely fine. It's also fine. different blood. Yes. Yeah, but it's close. Yeah. So I'm sure it, it will It doesn't have any more spider stuff you. in it, right? He's just a human boy. Oh, oh. oh. well, I mean, he's, he's the son of Spider-Man. So, so there's some part of it. <sighs> anyway, so uh, the Avengers fight Iron Man, or they, they just literally wreck everyone's Oh, wow, day. she oh. is really changing. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she is freaking out. She's like, you, you suck, Ivan. You ruined everything. I've always hated you. Yes. yes. <laughs> we are the worst couple. Well, like, we were never a couple. You're just right. a creep who wanted to bang me, but now I'm, like, a gross spider monster. You want me now, you freaking idiot? Oh, is that why he was called Cadaverous? Yeah, because he, like, reanimates corpses. But also, like, you know, oh, he has does a, stuff to him. I don't think he bangs them. I think it's just... I think he, That would be necrophilious. If you'd like to know, I have this jar of Vaseline. I can show you what Please it's Please don't! Like. Minka grabs Peter's face and like pulls him out of the back to tank oh. and he's like awake and aware and he's like fine yeah, but like but it's still, but still dying yeah. and also has tubes so like they strap him to a table and she gets more of his blood and she's like basically like she's like I have two arms right now and I'm alive so like I can do better science than you so she's starting to work on like the new genetic modifiers that need that she needs to stabilize her condition uh, meanwhile, uh, the, the, you know, the, the heroes try their best not to die. Ben puts a Spider-Man costume on to protect Marker and Tony. Uh, Riri got thrown into a pond so she can come back heroically and be Ironheart yeah. and say how much she missed this, which is antithetical to what she said earlier in the book, but whatever. So she saves you know, the she day. she hates it. So Spider-Man, uh, 
He he webs up Hulk uh, enough for Hulk to be webbed up and not a problem. What? Uh, Marker jumps on it's Black Widow. It's not actually Hulk. It's right. like it's it's, cyborg it's zombie cyborg. Hulk. It's 3M Hulk. He's not as strong right. or something. Yeah. So uh, Marker sprays Black Widow in the face and uh, <laughs> jumps off of her. And she says, my face. Like she's like vain because she's a woman, obviously. And uh, <laughs> meanwhile, Riri knocks webbed up cyborg zombie Hulk into the giant... Black Widow statue that blasts her statue's head off and then falls on real reanimated cyborg zombie Black Widow as she says my face so her face crushes her hardy har har and so the Avengers are defeated by a plucky band of teenagers and so that happens meanwhile uh, Minka has turned into a full-blown spider monster oh she is the other right now yeah she's the other and uh Basically, it says like Ivan, you're you're the worst. I'm gonna go deal with this myself. Ivan is regretting everything. He's yes, like, yeah. you were a person at one point. Now you're just this hideous spider yeah, thing. Yeah, and you're mean, and you're you're, you're really you're, you're really abusive. <laughs> so minions kill it. Yeah, uh, Stark mentions that the Avengers were used via Stark technology that are like in special like chips that control their minds. Right. The reanimated corpse the reanimated mines. corpse mines cyborg corpse that's mines. right so uh, this way we can also establish that those drones the the, the penance drones that yeah. like cadavers has been sending out they are also being controlled via Stark Tech neural inhibitors or whatever okay are they robots what are they they are people they they're, are. They're, they're corpses in penance costumes okay. so that's why one touched Peter Parker's yeah yeah because it's, it's, it's Mary Jane yeah, exactly yeah. exactly it's yeah. Mary Jane in there yeah so, I dug up another corpse yeah 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 that's right that's exactly what happened so uh, but we wow. also established like that's we need to establish the inhibitor chips so that like we know that Mary Jane is being controlled by uh, you know by yeah. cadaverous right uh, so anyway, she is dead though. She was. She, you know, she's well. She's reanimated. You know, they're, yeah. they're using Cadaverus's miracle healing technology. So she's like a walking corpse that still has. They all have their memories and and and, and, and personalities, but they're also like zombies. And you know, if they had like Spider Man's blood and some kind of like miracle science, uh, maybe <laughs> they, they could, could be, be normal re- people. Normal people. Or so, they could be giant spider. Or they could. Or, or, well, yeah, that, that's you know, could only go if you way. just went with Tube Peter Parker. But <laughs> Ben is the key. So we uh, we established that like. The news is reporting on uh, Minka, the now spider queen monster thing, has webbed up Peter Parker uh, on the bridge where it all started in the book. Uh, and we, had, we have Queen Goblin that just came out this queen year. Queen Goblin and, came and out. And now Spider Queen. And now Spider Queen, which is not to be confused with the queen who is spider themed and a Spider-Man villain. So anyway, uh, they don't call her anything. I just call her the queen because like, she's a big fucking yeah, look at her. woman. But uh, she's webbed up Spider-Man, Peter Parker. And she's like, come on, Spider-Boy, I got your dad. You better come down here. She's so, adapting to being a spider very quickly. Very quickly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's producing her own webs and she's manipulating them with ease. <laughs> so Ben swings to the, to the scene to save his dad because now he knows like he's been a piece of shit. He's been mad at his dad for no good reason. Uh, so he shows up and uh, he attacks, um, you know, Minka Tross, the spider monster. She sends her drones after him. He gets knocked out by drones, and then she makes off with him. Oh, yeah. So, so he loses. He so loses. he loses, and he's uh, and he's and he's hooked up to, to tubes and machines. Where's uh, where's uh, Riri? They're on their way, or oh. they're like slow. Oh. Well, they had to stop along the way to, like, you know, deface some property because Marker said that that was also... <laughs> That's right. right. Hey, whoa, whoa, we're passing by this pizza place. Who's on these helicopters? That are shooting? Those are the police. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, because, like, a giant spider showed up on, like... The, oh, finally like the, the authorities have stepped in. Yeah, yeah. Well, they were there. They, they actually arrived first before uh, ah, Ben even noticed. Okay. Uh, then we, uh, we we cut to Ben, who is now in the same hospital bed that Cadaverus must have procured in his lair oh. and hooked up to tubes. Uh, although, don't pay too much attention because, like, the tubes are in his stomach in one panel and then coming out of his chest in the other panel and then uh. going... They, they bounce around. So don't worry about that. Just, just <laughs> what the tubes are doing exactly. Or, or, really or even what, 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 in what positioning on his body they are, because they'll, they'll float from, from area yeah, to area. What's the purpose of the tubes? He's not terribly injured. No, but they do. No, the tubes are there to extract precious bodily fluids. Right, right. It's just they work the same way whether you're like grievously injured cut open or, not. or not. Oh, well, yeah. also, and I guess like the big, you know, Peter has bigger tubes, I guess, to use the cadaverous technology to reanimate or, or, or prolong Peter's life because remember he was stabbed through all his vital organs right before any of that happened so uh, 
Ivan's doing his thing. He's talking about reanimating Minka Tross. Of course, Ben got the 411 on who these characters all were and what his motivations are. Right. So he's like, wait, wait, whoa, whoa. If I'm the key and you're merging me with your with my dad's blood and you're figuring this all out, then that means that you could technically reanimate the dead and actually like fix them and heal them. Does that mean that you could actually save my dad and I could apologize to him for being a jerk to him the whole time? <laughs> and uh, you know, Cadavers is like, well, shut up. I don't want to. I, I don't want to come up with any other ideas. I want to. No, I want to fuck. Minka Tross as a right. sexy regular lady. Okay, but you're a, yeah, you're but a you're cyborg. A right, but like if, if you don't want to bang her as a giant spider monster, she's not going to want to bang you as a stupid Akira monster. <laughs> but then this, One thing at a time. I'll make time. myself normal too. Yeah, well, and, and, and he freaks out. Maybe if we had a few seconds, we could like make more of this miracle cure, but instead yeah. we only make the one. Uh, so then, oh, uh, just the one, really? Yeah, just the one. So uh, this this mysterious drone that no one could guess the identity of springs into action, attacks Cadaverus, and frees Ben. And Ben grabs the cure. Or, uh, it's called an inhibitor chip. You shouldn't be able to do that. Well, How come he only has one tube now? Well, she pulls out most of them, I'm sure. And then his costume just like reforms around. Oh yeah, yeah, that too. Are... Well, because I'm sure that Pichelli probably had to uh, draw these between the period of six months. So. Ben grabs the cure, he runs away with his mom, uh, I mean, secret drone person I don't know the name of, <laughs> and so they run through like a room that is just filled with bombs. Hey look, the drone oh. is talking now, which none of them have ever done. This is, they, they say things like, get him, or re, or <laughs> Or Roger Roger. So that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so uh, there's bombs. He's gonna attack. Yeah, they well they the world. no they go th yeah they go through the bomb room which uh, this drone sets off. Um, oh. Meanwhile, also what were, the, what were the bombs for? Who the fuck knows? What was that plan? Because we needed a, an exciting explosion in the third act of our movie. I mean script. I mean comic book. So. Uh, the drone is like, oh, the inhibitor chip or whatever. It, she doesn't know that there's an inhibitor chip. She just right. knows that she's being controlled by cadavers. She's like, it hurts. Uh, I'll become one of them again. You better run away. And Ben's like, wait, but I know it's Dark Tech. And I recognize one tube versus another tube. Like that Even tube. look all the same. Yeah, like that tube's <laughs> dark, but that one's the brand corporation. So I'll just take this one. So he unplugs the inhibitor chip. Now she's okay. They get topside and they find out that Cadaveris' location is actually on an old defunct ship. Oh. In the harbor of New York. Oh. That's just been there. That's just been there. Uh, oh, but also that explosion went off, so like the whole lab's gonna sink. Now it's sinking. Uh, but yeah, so um, Cadaverus goes topside. Uh, he's gonna attack them. Um, ben and his drone friend are left on the, whole, you know, on, on, the, on the top of the ship. Iron Man swoops in. He just whipped up an Iron Man suit really quick. Uh, <laughs> we see them do that earlier. Oh. And uh, he swings in and he grabs both of them. Really, he grabs Ben, but Ben won't let go of the drone. So the, all three of them fly to the to the climax of the book. Don't worry, kid. I'll save you. Repulsor blast. Yeah. <laughs> there, right. Oh, no, she's like trying to cling to you. <laughs> yeah. No, he doesn't really pay attention. Also, for some reason, Pichelli draws Iron Man like his armor is also an old man. Like, it's frail, and it has, like, <laughs> weird creases and stuff. <laughs> Whatever. So, uh, um, yeah, uh, Cadaverous is going to eat Riri Williams' face. As she says, I'll eat your face. And, uh, I'll eat your face. I'll eat your this face. Thing about faces in this book. I don't know. What is it? What is it with faces? I don't know. Black Widow got her face. She got her face like spray painted, painted and, and then, then crushed a face by fell a face. On her. Yeah. Uh. So uh, don't worry. Marker got upgraded. She has a special gun that shoots uh, Minka in the spider face. It doesn't really do anything, <laughs> what, but like whatever. A flare? It, yeah. Uh, it's 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 a special like gun. I don't know. It maybe it's paint. It's really dumb. Uh, so it's a, paint, it's a giant paintball. Yeah, uh, Minka, I like that. Uh, Marker goes to Peter. She's like, "Hey, Spider-Man, I'm friends with your son. We got, uh, we almost got arrested after we met in detention." And he's like, "I don't like this story." So then Iron Man delivers Ben and the drone to Marker and Peter, and he says, "You know, ta-da." Uh, ben has a great line where he says, "Dad, Faye, look, I brought some extra help, and I'm not, and I'm somehow not dead." Because this book is filled with lines like this. Uh, I've really saved you a lot of trouble because like, we don't get into the dialogue. Yeah, clearly uh, there's a lot like that. It's a lot of that. So uh, Ben you know, faces his father and Peter's like, hey. Uh, ben says, I've got the cure. We're going to save your life. And then the, the monster, uh, Minka, shows up, knocks them both down. He drops the vial. Oh He's my a, God, she's huge now. Oh yeah, she's oh, really yeah. big. And, uh, and literally Ben goes, guys, I think I lost something important. Like he dropped the vial but that's how he says it. And so uh, Minka grabs Ironheart and she's just yelling at everybody like, tell me where the cure that Ivan made is. And then she grabs Ben and he's like, I don't know where it is. I dropped it somewhere. Uh, so then she drops him 
and then uh, the drone, it, Mary Jane sees the vial, <laughs> yeah, and uh, she grabs it and goes over to Peter, and Peter is there, and he's like, hey, and she's like, hey, this is gonna save you. And he goes, whoa, 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 why do you care about me? Who are you? And she says, I think you know, Tiger. And you see like her kind of like mangled face underneath it. And she Yikes. says, "Let me do. Let me let me make this right." So she's gonna she's gonna inject him, and Peter uses his spider speed, and he grabs her, and he injects her in the arm instead. So Cadaver shows up, he grabs Peter, he's like, "Give me the key." He's like, "Sorry, I wasted it." <laughs> and it's been injected into Mary Jane. She says, "No, you injected me." <laughs> uh, Minka, of course, is not like that because she's a horrible giant mo spider monster. She's like, oh, Ivan, you fucked everything up. Uh, that's not a spider. That's yeah, like she a is. giant flea. Now it's like a tick or a no, flea. Yeah. yeah. She just keeps changing into uh, other uh, stuff. I, I know. It's very confusing. It's terrible. Yeah. So uh, Ben and Faye are together. They're going to get attacked by Minka. And uh, Faye fires her gun, but it's not working. She asks why. Because Iron Man explains the safety's on. But then, she fired it before. before. Yes. So then uh, Minka is attacked by a uh, giant heavy metal beam, it, it, it knocks her on the head mm. by a healed Mary Jane. Who's super strong now. Yeah, well, because she got injected with the spider thing. They explained earlier how the cure will leave spiders, spider powers. Ah. Basically, you'll just be a cool Spider-Man character. Right. But you won't, like, look gross. So, <laughs> uh, Mary Jane clocks Minka in the face with a big, heavy beam. Uh, and then Cadaverous like musters a little bit of his strength together. I thought he was dead. No, he, well, like, everyone gets dead in this book. Like, everyone, get, everyone who don't trust anyone who gets stabbed in the chest by giant sharp metal objects that would absolutely kill the character because it doesn't work. Uh, oh, and the Avengers, you're back too, right? No, we we used no. it all to Thunk. save Mary Jane. Oh, so uh, Ivan's pissed. They could just make more. How? Of Peter's the cure. still there. Ben's still there. He is, he is still there. That's true. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> Ivan is like, oh, I didn't love... Like, Okay, so like clearly the whole thing is like Ivan wants to bang Minka. It's like, I love you and I kept you under glass forever. I dug up your corpse and I put you in this thing because I love you. And then at the end he's like, I didn't just... I didn't want to have sex with you. I just wanted kindness. I just wanted you to be nice to me and you were mean. So uh, I'm going to send my drones and they're going to hit you with bombs and fuck you. So then like Minka is attacked by all these nope. penis drones and... Uh, Meanwhile, um, Mary Jane asks Ben, like, how do I look? And he says, like, the pictures. Oh. Uh, you haven't aged a day. Yes. Even though you were a corpse for 12 years. That's right. Yeah, well, so, she was in suspended... Uh, suspended corpse aging. animation. Yeah. So uh, Mary Jane and Ben help Peter up. Uh, they all... <laughs> I love that, like, over there. These fucking drones are just like... You just hear... <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh, Peter, you're hey. okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, oh should we interfere God. at all? Nah, it's fine. They also have one of the worst family movie tropes, in, in in my opinion. Yeah. I hate this so much. Peter's being carried by Mary Jane and Ben. He goes, why, hello, my totally normal family. And Ben goes, we're so weird. I hate when that happens. <laughs> like, I hate it. I, I, I'm surprised by how much I hate it. When a kid goes like, like, what, what, like at the end of Incredibles, when Dash goes, I love our family. I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just, it's just like I, like you know how yeah, I, I know, it. you know how I know I love you, you know how I know you love you guys because of what you just went through and did. I don't need a character to articulate right. through speech that they love each other. No, we got to be quippy again. It's so fucking annoying. <laughs> how about the fact that I hated my dad for the longest time? Well, then I found out like he was. I hated him for reasons that were unclear and unexplained to me. And reasons that Aunt May could have easily explained to me, but didn't. And never did. Yeah. yeah. So uh, then they all just kind of like sit down for a second. And, uh, you know, Peter's just left to like lie on a rock. And, uh, you know, the well, cure. No they used all the cure and he's right. like withering away. Right. And he basically okay. apologizes for being away from Ben and he says he loves him and all that stuff. And then uh, all of their spider senses go off Mary Jane, Ben, and Peter, because they all have spider senses. Right. Now. They're all spider people now. So Peter pushes Mary Jane and Ben off the bridge because their spider strength, strength will save them. Yeah. And uh, uh, Minka, Cadaverous, and all the drones explode from all those bombs and stuff. Uh, that fight that was happening off yeah. screen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, apparently it's really <laughs> important. Finally, it it uh, culminated came... in a huge explosion <laughs> that also killed Peter. And so Mary Jane helps Ben out of the water. And then we cut to after the wake for Peter and presumably like 
everyone else because like with the death of Peter dies any hope of bringing back the Avengers right. or any of those other people who are lost. So we really, we can't get the same nah. shit out of Ben. No, we already buried him. He's he's done. So yeah, Peter's but, dead. Yeah, ben has his blood and crap. Yeah, in but like uh, the, the 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 research boat sank and cadavers uh, well, exploded. That's and, true. And Peter and, and and even though Tony's like out of retirement, yeah, he's still I, I wish not we knew any super scientists. I, I wish. I've only if only the Marvel universe had a few. So everyone leaves, uh, and then uh, Ben goes to comfort his mother, who's lost her husband and regained her life. And then Aunt May shows up and says. Uh, Mr. Stark left this for you, and they both open up the trunk, and it's Spider-Man costumes for both Ben and Mary Jane, and it ends with this suggestion that like there's going to be like a mother-son spider duo future of this book, which of course there never will be, <laughs> because this did not become the sales juggernaut that they anticipated. What? what? And uh, it was not the critical darling that everyone was hoping for. What? Shot. Nor was it a uh, fan favorite by anybody. Yeah. No. Uh, that's not true. Henry Abrams loves it. I, I would too if I were Henry Abrams <laughs> because it'd be my only writing credit ever. Good Lord. Well. So that's it, Spider-Man Bloodline. It's uh, really bad. It's really bad. That's, that is, <laughs> that, that is so fucking weird. I try, I try lately fuck? not to be like, this book sucks, but it really does. And it's just not, it, it, there's nothing redeeming about it. Like it doesn't add anything to the universe while also trying desperately to add things. You know, like, hey, how about Mary Jane is a Spider-Man and uh, they have a son. You know, normally they do like a, a daughter thing, but like, how about a son, you know? Like, great, let's also kill off Spider-Man. And kill Spider-Man, well, get out of the way. We've done enough Spider-Man stories. This is about the next generation. About the next generation, which includes his wife from the same generation. Uh, yeah, that too. But it's a woman, so you know, it's all right. Yeah. It, so, Blew. I get the fact that Peter Parker like abandoned his family because he felt guilty. Well, because he felt guilty, boy. and also he knew that he was the key that Cadaverus was chasing. So as long as he kept his physical distance from Ben, Cadaverus wouldn't chase after Peter to get to anyone else. Yeah, but he doesn't know who he is. No, but if he was, if he continued to be Spider-Man and stayed near Ben, maybe someday Cadaverus would be able yeah, to Yeah, but tell. he didn't right, continue so to be Spider-Man, be so it should have been fine. That's true. But I guess he could have used my logic, yeah. wherein... Yeah, he could have just gone to his house. He could have just showed up at the house. Yes, and but then, didn't. But then you would need to, like, go into hiding to right. really solve the problem. Which he doesn't. So it's really more about, like, just avoiding... Yeah, his yeah. Son. It's just kind Avoiding of like his excuse. son because yeah. you remind me of your mom. Well, yeah. someday yeah. Cadaverus might show up, and I don't want to be near Ben when that happens. That's it. But that's there his was absolutely no reason he wouldn't just go to the house. Yes, that's right. And just like tear through the attic looking for documents yeah. and information and shit. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I am frustrated because like at least the collected volume does not include. The letters by the Abrams, which I think are really important. Like, I wish it also had like a hologram that showed you the awkward video that came with the promotion for this book. Because, right, because like, it's all part of the it's story. It's all part of the story. Like the 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 manufactured, deliberate, bait and switch hype of the Web Four. Yeah. To the oh. Nick Lowe Marvel produced trailer that they made. To Who the counts down from four? Somebody who wants to use the facts that Spider-Man Four is a thing that people have heard of. Yeah. You count down from to five, or you count down from three. The only reason you count down from four is just to manipulate the audience. Yeah. It's just to yep. say, it's just a trick, make people think, to get people talking. Oh, to it's get, a fantastic four. Is it Spider-Man Four? Yeah. Also, by the way, Why if, four? if if there was more enthusiasm for a comic book adaptation of Spider-Man Four than J.J. Abrams' as Spider-Man, yeah, maybe just do that. Maybe just do that. I mean, it's been a few years, and like, you know what? I'll bet Sam Raimi, who is now an employee of Marvel Studios, would at least give you the story outline of Spider-Man 4 and be like, here. Maybe, maybe he's a huge asshole. And he's just like, no, I'm gonna make Spider-Man 4. I'm holding that There's until no. I can make my opus. Yeah, yeah, my apology movie? No. Yeah. It's gonna be nothing but dancing. It's gonna be a musical. Spider-Man yeah. 4, the musical. Turn off the dark. <laughs> It's just a movie adaptation of that horrible Broadway play <laughs> directed by Sam Raimi. That, I would see. Are you kidding me? I would not see that. <laughs> I but, would not. But I would see a musical done by Sam Raimi. That's what I'm but, saying. But not oh, turn but off not the Spider-Man? I would see it for no, free not turn off the on ah. Disney Plus. 
Right. I, I would, would not go that. anywhere, and I would not pay for it. But if it came to if me, came to my TV, and it was free like, already, I would watch Like it. the Cats movie. I want to see the Cats movie. I would movie also like to see the Cats movie. I do not. On a service I already have. But I want to see the butthole cut. I don't want to see... <laughs> I want to see what they thought was appropriate to release first. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you guys next time. With a whole new episode of Back Issues, I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And this was the butthole cut. <laughs> yeah, this one. This Big book. <laughs> yeah, you want to look for the butthole? It's right here. Spider-Man Bloodline. See you next week. Uh, wow. That was horrible.